my presentation was going to be focused on, on preparing a geopack deliverable for mobile LIDAR. And in the end, that's exactly what the, the presentation will deliver. But there's a whole lot to do before we get there. And I think I drink the same Kool-Aid Bobby drinks when it comes to project planning. Um, you can't plan enough. Uh, you need to know where you're going before you start your journey. So knowing the end deliverables um, is critical in knowing how to get there. So um, planning can't go, uh, you can't plan uh, nearly enough. Uh, back when I started my career 32 years ago, this, this little yellow box down in the lower right corner was the technology of the day. It's a microwave measuring instrument. That, an old tellurometer where you can measure up to 19 miles um, using microwave technology and with a little headset you can actually talk through those microwaves and you can, you, can, you can measure some pretty accurate distances but that's just a comparison of technology when I started and the technology we're all here to talk about right now. Um, quickly, uh, REY engineers were based out of Folsom, a single, uh, a single office firm, 24 of us right now. Um, we, acquired, we acquired the first VMX 250 sold uh, in the United States back in uh, July of 2010. Our project locations range from uh, Alaska, Denali National Park, down to Tampa, Florida. We did a project for Gene Quinn, who's in the audience. Uh, did a project in Western Australia, um, uh, iron ore mines, stockpiles, and equipment. Um, and then a small project up in Rhode Island last year, and, and quite a bit in between. Our, our primary client uh, of late, or for the past two years, has been Caltrans, just simply because we're based in California. Uh, we're working with Caltrans um, on, an, on an active basis to uh, refine and test their mobile terrestrial laser scanning specifications in terms of control point density, um, accuracies relative to what the, the final deliverable needs to be. Uh, one thing we've really been fortunate enough to uh, 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 schedule on all our projects with Caltrans is, uh, in, oops, excuse me, in the photograph you'll see two um, California Highway Patrol cruisers. We're able to uh, arrange for rolling traffic brakes behind our scan vehicle um, for, for three primary reasons. One, for safety. Uh, two, it eliminates, originally we went into it thinking safety and eliminating noise that we would need to uh, classify out. Well, we kind of threw the classification excuse out and we've come down to the point where we convince the client that it, that it produces a better data set. Uh, for example, a, a, a semi-truck alongside the scan vehicle is going to block um, several hundred feet of curb and gutter, may miss some critical design features. And when you, when you tell the client that, they're, they're totally on board with uh, somehow arranging a rolling traffic brake behind the vehicle. Um, the project that I want to discuss in terms of the Geopack deliverable was a project in Iowa, uh, an interchange. It's approximately one mile from north to south, uh, a mile from east to west, including five ramps. Uh, the red triangles are the, are the LIDAR control points we set out. It was a qualifications-based selection. Um, the area had been previously mapped by the Iowa DOT, both photogrammetrically and on the, by ground survey. They were using it as a a comparison mode for uh, analyzing uh, mobile LIDAR to field survey to uh, photogrammetric mapping. Our scope was to compile and deliverable, uh, excuse me, compile and deliver microstation CAD files and a Geopack 10. Um, after, uh, based on our deliverable, Iowa DOT was going to uh, did some analysis between the three data sets. Uh, success on our behalf, delivering a product that they were very happy with, meant a, uh, a follow-on project that would take place up in Waterloo, Iowa, which we are currently negotiating. They were extremely happy with the product we delivered um, on the first project. The project team consisted of the Iowa DOT. They set and positioned 37 LiDAR targets for us. They provided rolling traffic break during the scan acquisition. Foth Infrastructure out of Des Moines was our local team member. Uh, to provide the geopack expertise. Um, in California, we primarily deliver KC um, to the DOT and primarily inroads to the c consultants that work for the DOT. So our, our background did not include geopack whatsoever. So we brought both on board. They also provided GPS base station and some QC field surveys for us. Their final role was to be to QC and format the geopack deliverable for, uh, in the end. 
the desired accuracy stated by the DOT was 600 sub a foot. So we took uh, Caltrans in their in Chapter 15 of their survey manual addresses terrestrial and mobile laser scanning. We were able to uh, relax the 500 foot interval spacing for the mobile lidar targets. We expanded them out to 1,200 feet based on past experiences we've had um, on projects in, in the country. Uh, we, targets are placed on each side of the trajectory. Um, uh, reflective tape, temporary traffic tape, and um, highly reflective. We set a PK nail or a mag nail right at the point, and when we get the scan data back, that's an outline of that target, um, super with uh, with the control point sitting right at the point. So they if they really stand out. We can adjust horizontally and vertically to these. Vertically, um, vertically, we're getting really good results, uh, and I'll talk more more about that later. This is, this is the overall trajectory for the project. The project consisted of 18 records. Um, if you're familiar with RIPE process and you, you know what a scan record is, basically every mile we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a file break. Um, so each of our records are a maximum of one mile long for manage, uh, file manageability size. But essentially this is the entire trajectory. One practice that we've employed is breaking the trajectory out into uh, segments. Each, each trajectory segment matches up with the record. So in, in, a, in a sense, what we're doing is if you see the little bit of, the little bit of noise that takes, well, those are the, the static um, sessions, the three to five minute static sessions. What we're doing is we're, we're making a, a specific trajectory for each record. Three to five minute se uh, static sessions between each record. What we're able to do is break those files apart and, and that three to five minute static session is the end of one trajectory, but it's also the beginning of the other. So we're reusing the static data in our trajectory processing. And, and, look, and we're trying to eliminate any, um, any dirty data from being carried from one record to the next unnecessarily by using clean static data at the beginning, clean static data at the end, and, and again, it's, it, it's a standalone uh, trajectory. So we have a separate trajectory for each segment uh, record. This was pre-scan alignment tool, so using the automatic tie planes, and we, we kind of we get a lot of tie planes the way we're processing, doing the um, uh, auto tie plane uh, routine. Uh, as you can see, we had uh, we had 130,000 tie planes on this project between all the records. Um, the, the resulting uh, standard deviation for all those tie planes after we filtered out all the the, uh, the erroneous. Um, in outliers, we were down to 34 thousandths of a foot on our on, on just our uh, auto tie plane adjustment. Linking 37 tie points to the to all the planes uh, and making that adjustment, we were able to reduce the uh, standard error down to excuse me about 100 just over a hundredth of a foot, basically a hundredth of a foot throughout the project on the at the control. Further control reporting, we use Mars from Merrick, or we use the, the control point reporting routine in TopoDot, which, which I prefer over the Mars solution. Mars, per, Mars reporting is based on three points that surround the control point, whereas TopoDot, you can grab a user-defined radius, uh, and it filters out any noise that you may have. But in, in the end, this was the, this was the control reporting results from the project in Iowa. Um, overall project, uh, RMSC of 13,000, so that's, this is, at the time, this was our best project in terms of reporting. We've, we've recently bettered this by a thousandth of a foot on the Tampa project we did for, for Gene Quinn on a design build. Moving on, upon exporting last files, we moved into, moved into MicroStation, um, V8i, select, sitter, select Series 2, using TopoDot um, in a, you know, Standard fashion, extracting brake lines, just like taking topo shots in the field. We we typically place our vertices at ten at a ten foot interval. We'll also create road points at a, at that same ten foot interval, um, but then at three foot offsets across the roadway to get a quite dense uh, digital terrain model. This shows the this shows the tinning that took place from the uh, from the project. You can see the very normal. Uh, triangles, which create, which develops a very nice and strong uh, DTM, and it also creates very nice-looking contours. Irregular triangulation creates contours that someone might—they're not—they're not too aesthetically pleasing. So we found that if we, we if we normalize our data extraction on a on a nice even pattern, 
uh, the end result looks a lot better when for those that are, are 